In this section, we will focus on the elongation and termination phases of transcription. For the elongation material, we will only focus on prokaryotic mechanisms as these are better understood. For termination processes, we will first focus on prokaryotic systems and then take a brief look at the complexity of eukaryotic termination processes. Once transcription has been initiated, the elongation phase is where the RNA polymerase enzyme will use the coding strand of DNA as a template to create the nascent RNA. Once transcription has been initiated, the elongation phase is where the RNA polymerase enzyme will use the template strand of DNA to create the nascent RNA. This diagram shows the catalytically active RNA polymerase. You can see that within the enzyme's catalytic center, a small transcription bubble will form where the DNA helix is unwound. The template DNA strand is shown in blue and the magnesium cofactor is positioned at the catalytic active site and is shown in red. This diagram shows the catalytic activity of the polymerase in a little more detail. The DNA template is shown in gray and the nascent RNA strand is shown in red. The polymerase has two major conformations during the process of elongation. The closed catalytic conformation is used when the polymerase is adding nucleotides to the nascent chain. Notice here that a diphosphate is cleaved from the incoming nucleotide. Further hydrolysis of the diphosphate will release energy that helps to drive this reaction forward. Once the incoming nucleotide has been added, the polymerase has to then translocate down the DNA template in order to open up the position for the next nucleotide to enter. It does this by switching to an open conformation. This conformation is more flexible and allows the polymerase to essentially pull itself along the DNA template one nucleotide at a time. Within the catalytic center, a bridge region shown in yellow and a hinge loop region shown in pink are required for catalysis and translocation. In the closed conformation, shown on the top, the polymerase is modestly flexible, which enables the positioning of the magnesium close to the catalytic center to facilitate nucleotide addition. Following nucleotide addition, the bridge assumes an open conformation that is much more flexible. Movement of the hinge loop causes bending of the bridge in the polymerase and this enables it to shift down on the DNA template. Sometimes the elongation phase does not move smoothly in the forward direction. The elongation complex can sometimes regress in a process that's called backtracking. This can sometimes be caused by the misincorporation of a nucleotide or by brief pauses of the RNA polymerase complex. The backtracking process, however, will stall the elongation process and it must now be rescued by an additional protein helper to continue the elongation mechanism. GRE factors are involved in rescuing a stalled transcriptional elongation complex. During normal elongation, the GRE protein is bound to the active elongation complex, 
but it doesn't exert any activity on the complex. It essentially stays out of the way, like a tool in a tool belt. However, upon backtracking or nucleotide misincorporation, the GRI factor produces its own trigger loop domain, which supplants the normal catalytic trigger loop of the RNA polymerase. We saw this in more detail on the previous slide. The GRE factor will then cleave off any overhanging RNA from the backtracked complex. The elongation complex is then rescued and the normal trigger loop domain of the RNA polymerase will be active again and can resume the elongation process. Termination of transcription in prokaryotes can occur using an intrinsic model. The diagram on the left shows a polymerase enzyme in yellow in the open conformation with the DNA in blue and the nascent RNA in red. Intrinsic termination occurs at specific template sequences, an inverted repeat followed by a run of adenine residues. This sequence causes the formation of a short stem loop structure in the nascent RNA chain, which in essence will derail the polymerase from continuing. Extrinsic factors can also be involved in the termination process. This can be most aptly seen by the functioning of the Rho protein. In the nascent messenger RNA, which extends outward from the RNA polymerase machinery, the Rho protein is a small horseshoe-shaped protein that can clamp on to the extending nucleotide. Biochemical and structural data suggest that Rho initially binds to the RNA in an open lock washer conformation that closes into a planar ring as the RNA transfers into the central cavity. There, the single-stranded RNA contacts the asymmetric secondary binding site. Upon hydrolysis of ATP, the single-stranded RNA is pulled, causing a loop of RNA to form within the structure. This will lead to Rho translocation and ultimately promoting the RNA polymerase to dissociate. In eukaryotes, termination of protein coding gene transcription by RNA polymerase II usually requires a functional polyadenylation signal. Typically, a variation of the sequence AAU AAA, nascent pre-messenger RNA, is cleaved by the YSH1 protein and then polyadenylated by the CPF proteins. Currently, the details of this mechanism have not been fully elucidated and multiple models have been postulated. You can read more about these models in Chapter 10. In the next section, we will discuss eukaryotic messenger RNA post-translational processing in more detail. Whoops, I meant post-transcriptional processing.